Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's Camelot 0001. And this is Sora Master. <laughs> and that was our <laughs> my our impersonations of our impressions of the Joker and um Bane. See, I picked up on that. I wasn't sure where you're going with that at first. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're with its gaming fancy today, people. And um today we're doing a review for God of War Ascension that our Sora Master has played. And we'll be giving his input on various aspects of the game. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, let's begin by talking about the concept of this game. Okay. What's the story? So the idea behind the game is Kratos uh, breaks his blood oath with Ares. The one that he made when he was about to get killed. He, uh, he sold his soul to, to not be killed by his enemies at the time. He became a uh, Ares' slave. Soldier, basically. And there are um, three Furies, and their job is to punish those who break blood oaths with the gods. So, basically, Kratos is like, "Fuck your laws! Uh, if you don't want me to do Kratos, this, if you don't so. want me to do this, then I'll just go ahead and kill you." Because <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so that's that's the game is basically him trying to get out of the blood oath and uh, remember exactly what happened because he also has like some sort of amnesia throughout this game. That he um, he uh, he comes into terms with at the end. Yeah, I'm sort of familiar with mythology, and just knowing that Kratos is killing the Furies or like trying to, it's just awesome because <laughs> that's because they really can't be avoided, and all they do is terrorize people. So yeah, it's just so the thought like, of him like, <laughs> I'm, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. And um, what did you think about the graphics for this? I love them. <laughs> yeah, they were they were pretty because I watched you play it for like four hours and it was amazing. It was great, and the end game graphics were good. You actually saw his face changing and stuff when um he was doing magic attacks. You see him get like Rah! and his face would actually like contort, and the um cutscene graphics were beautiful. Obviously, I mean you couldn't tell which were which was one and which was the which was the other. It was like. It was great. And it was the same thing. Which goes into something we're going to talk about later, but that's that was actually a really good... I love the graphics. It was fun. Oh, well, one point, though. Uh, kind of a bit much on the blood spurts. <laughs> but then again, it's God of War. The blood gushing. <laughs> but that's God of War, so I can't really say much about it. And um, the soundtrack, or the, the score, was... Well, the score was beautiful as always. They 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 don't they don't really fail uh, fail on that one. It's and, always uh, epic. Sony Santa Monica, but sometimes the background music was a little louder than the voice music. So yeah, do you, did you think sound. in boss battles the sounds or maybe the sound effects were too loud compared to? No, actually, um, I mean there was sometimes where you'd hear a boss like trying to say something while you're fighting them. And you don't really hear hear what they say because you're too busy like mauling ass and <laughs> and stuff like that. And sometimes the music will get a little louder for that, like I said. But it was never really anything that that would get to you. So yeah. So playability, and this I think is kind of a big aspect for this game because it's a prequel. How would you Kind of have a have you know that mapped out, considering that you've had all these other games come out. Well, in the other games, you get god powers, and that's that's like a that became like a stable. Where you you would take like Poseidon's trident, and you have some Poseidon's powers and stuff like that. In this game, this is before any of that stuff, so you don't have god powers. You you're relying on something else. So, but but they still kind of keep it similar in that sense, at least with the magic. Um, you don't really get any uh, different weapons as like something that you carry around. You can pick up weapons from enemies, so in that that that's a little different. But um, it makes it those those weapons sometimes make it easier in the fights. But the playability is really similar to uh, the other God of War's um, 
The other thing I changed is like grapples. Uh, now we're done with the, I think, R1 instead of circle. It used to be circle. Um, <laughs> and dodging, it's fine up until you get into Titan mode, <laughs> which, I, <laughs> which I tried in there. And, and that's like, you can't even, you get hit twice and you're dead and you can't, you can't avoid every attack. So it, it's, my description of Titan mode is grinding your, uh, your balls against rock salt. That's, <laughs> So if you want to do that, mode. in general though, fun, good playability. Entertainment, um... I mean, you can even attest to this one. It's entertaining just to watch. It is really entertaining to watch. <laughs> I think it was more entertaining to watch, just because there was and I, I suspense would get, <laughs> added for the person. Yeah, I would get distracted, like, looking at the scenery and looking at, like, the the cinematography while you're fighting like this huge ass boss because the bosses and the scenery would be combined you couldn't help but get absorbed into the background because like so much was happening but you, you didn't realize that i'm supposed to do something at this point and yeah you didn't and do it, like you oh you missed die. the button prompt <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was really fun to watch really fun to play um only thing i could ask for is like, maybe a few more puzzles um i think there was only like four or five like real puzzles in there. There was some like overarching puzzles that were like more than just one part of the uh, of the stage, but in general there wasn't too many puzzles and not they weren't really all that complicated either. There was something you could figure out pretty easily. So in that sense they could have done a little bit more with that like other God of War games, but it was still still good. I think is this would you say this is probably one of the shorter shortest games? Yeah, I mean, I can't really say, like, because <laughs> the, the way I played it, I, I just flew you through it. You beat it in a day. I flew through it because I knew where they hide stuff, so I didn't spend too much time looking for it. Like, you saw me, I would I would start going one way, then you're like, oh wait, video games. So you turn back around, just check your the, the foreground uh, before you go anywhere. Because they take advantage of your ADD. Just yeah, assuming they think that you're you have it. Going. Like, I seem to go forward, you know. So, I mean, in that sense, like, I, I knew how to do things. I knew, like, how to figure things out a little quicker. So I, it didn't take me too long. There was, like, maybe one or two puzzles that had me, like, what the fuck do I do here? But once you figured it out, it was like, oh, really? <laughs> I did that and it didn't work the first time. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, um, it wasn't anything, like, too daunting. It wouldn't take too long to play. So saying that, would you... Think that the replay value was good then, because if a game is short, then I would expect the, for the replay value to be really. High. Yeah, I'm, I'm right now. Like I said, I'm working through Titan mode, and it's it's still fun because it's not like I'm tired of the characters yet. Like if you have a longer game, you see the same character over and over. You get tired of Bentley's voice. You get tired. Of <laughs> <laughs> no, no shade thrown to Bentley. But. <laughs> but you get tired of the characters sometimes, and in here you don't really have that opportunity, except for like the first Fury, um, Megara. <laughs> yes, same name as the lady from uh, Hercules. <laughs> no relation. Um, but, uh, I think we already talked about the combat system, but it is a prequel, so you don't have the weapons that you would otherwise have. Yeah, so... So they had to find some way to give you... Um, sort of just put the Blades of Chaos a, and yeah, expand on it. Yeah. So it basically it's like, I don't know if you've ever played um, Spyro... Um, Enter the Dragonfly, um, but in there, Spyro gets like different elemental fire breaths or whatever. You have fire, electricity, lightning. Actually, Metroid Prime. Okay, because you get like different yeah elemental guns, and you can get them more powerful and stuff. So yeah. that that's that's what this is like, where you basically have the Blaze of Chaos, and you got fire, electricity, uh, death, and uh, what's the other one? I don't want to say water. Ice? It wasn't... It wasn't... Yeah, I think it was ice. I think it might have been ice. That would have been Poseidon's thing. But it was like... You know... Similar attacks, but the, the best part of it was when you do the um, the rage meter attack or when you do the magic attacks. And my favorite magic attack is the fire one. I use that almost exclusively. Because it kind of stops the combat around you, but then you can also... Um, put a lot of damage on some of the big enemies. So yeah. Um, I think we already talked about the, <laughs> the transition stereo layer, but... No, we, we kind of touched on it, but um, I didn't exactly say 
the transition between in-game and cutscene graphics was pretty much seamless. It was beautiful, right? The way they did it. It was too seamless. It was like sometimes I wouldn't realize that this would be the part where you could actually do stuff. Yeah, and then uh, some of the uh, one of the big things that they said was uh, there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of situations where you don't have the button prompted to kind of like figure out what to do, and there's other times where you're in the middle of a, of a cutscene and you can do button prompts, and that's all melded in there really nicely. It's like you walk into a door as you're in game, and then when you open the door, uh, it cuts to him opening the door into a, a, a cutscene. Cutscene goes through, and then while you're still in the cutscene, there's there's an action that you do to uh, to fight an enemy, and it's like it's all you don't have a break. There's no save points, so it's yeah. all like one big movie that you're playing through. And when you didn't have button prompts, did it feel organic enough to where you could tell what to do? Yeah, like it's not like their arm would light up as they were about to punch you on the right side of your face. It was more like you see them cock back, and you're like, okay, this is gonna hit me on the left side. Let me dodge that. Or you see them like about to swipe and you see where it's coming up high so you duck down. It wasn't it wasn't anything too hard. Either. Okay. Um, originally speaking, if um, that makes any sense. <laughs> but I don't think that's like yeah, originality. I just <laughs> wanted to say it a different way. <laughs> um I'm gonna start off by comparing this to games similar to it, then I'll go to the uh, other God of War games. If you think something like Darksiders, which is like what I was considered like a ripoff of uh, God of War. If you compare it to Darksiders or something, even something like Devil May Cry, this is this isn't going to be anything too too different. I mean, not like the old Devil May Cry, but like the new Devil May Cry, <laughs> DMC, uh, <laughs> TMC 2013, 2013. Devil May Cry. <laughs> um, it's you know it's nothing too too. Um, new as far as like fighting and everything obviously cinematography and everything doesn't doesn't even compare to those two games because this, this one's so much better <laughs> um but when you compare it to like god of war games i'd say it's in the same thing it's nothing nothing brand new mm -hmm. um again kind of like the more seamlessness is good and, yeah and the in in cutscene actions are good so that's that's definitely plus it's only gone up it's only definitely. yeah it's only done it, but didn't go down at all. The presentation probably makes it more original for me, just because it's so, so much better. Yeah. It's a beautiful game. What did you think about the ending? Was trying to have <laughs> as less no spoilers, not least spoilers, okay, least amount so of spoilers possible. No spoilers. I'm gonna watch my words as I leave my mouth. Um, it was a great ending. Up until a certain point, it was a great ending. It was something where you were like, you you see why Kratos has become the way he has become, and there's something in there where you're like, oh, obviously Kratos would do this, but he really doesn't want to do it. And yeah. Then, <laughs> and then he's basically like forced to do it, and that's something that he does in every other game, which is like, I'll say this much: he usually doesn't leave anybody alive at the end of a game. <laughs> And in this one, he wanted to, but he still couldn't. Um, he he uh, he does what he needs to do to get where he needs to go. This is really the best way I can say this without spoiling <laughs> anything. Um, and it was it was a great ending, up until Gaia started talking, and then it seemed like they were trying too hard to like connect this to God of War One, which I guess is what you kind of have to do with yeah, the prequel. Yeah, but I can I. S Saw the ending and it was trying to like. It was, it was trying, it was trying to be. Hard. It was too much exposition. Yeah. When at that end. point it should have been more about. It should have been just. It should have left what's happening that. emotionally in the story. Let's put it this way: like there was graphic, and then it cuts off to uh, uh, just the scenery, and then Gaia talking. They should have just left it at the graphic, and stopped there. And Gaia should have just shut the fuck up. Yeah, because that is <laughs> we don't need. We don't need exposition. You can tie the. You, you know can, what's coming next. Yeah. You just play the first game. <laughs> so in that sense, I mean, it was great up until that point. All right. So oh, and there's stuff. <laughs> Can't forget about any unique characters. <laughs> um, 
Well, let's start off with like the, the main enemies, which were the Furies. Uh, they were kind of generic God of War enemies. Um, you're beneath me, you can't kill me. I think some things to fuck with Kratos. Yeah, and that's, um, one of the, one of the Furies has an ability to make him, like, see things. Mm -hmm. And that, that brought out something from Kratos that you usually don't see, which is his human side. So weird seeing him in certain scenes the way he acts. Even seeing him, I think I saw him s sit down in a house with like a table and I was like, is this... He was in his house. He was in his house. I'm like, are you it, at your house, Kratos? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I've never seen that before. Just, just that, like just seeing that around. was like... But it was like, really, just took it away from you. You were like, whoa, what am I playing right now? Because it felt like a like a dramatic movie at some point. It felt like Gladiator. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Like believe, that like, end scene where he's like dying and he sees his like family in the <laughs> in the wheat fields. <laughs> like, this is this is amazing. I, I, you don't see it coming. You know it's coming, but you're still like, well, oh, this is this is like for real, dudes. <laughs> so in that sense, Kratos even became a unique character. And then um, Orcos is something you meet up early on in the game. He's uh he's an interesting person he kind of brings out that that human nature in Kratos he's he's Kratos's I'd say that's Kratos's only friend in all of the games <laughs> <laughs> is Orcos so I mean that that goes towards the um, satisfying ending as well <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm just know what he's talking about so I'm laughing um, <laughs> And last but not least, DLC updates. Um, were there any um, that were worth? I think there's been some DLC for the multiplayer, which I don't even want to touch on because I, I give two fucks about the multiplayer for this game. Um, it just seemed like something they were really trying to push just to see if they can go somewhere new with it. And good try, guys, but I didn't personally like it too much. Um, updates. I don't know if, if it if it got done yet, but I know there was a rumor going around about a certain part in, uh, in the elevator uh, going up into, uh, I think it's Hermes' statue, or Helios' statue, one of those two. And it's like an elevator where you, you, there's like three levels where you have to fight some bosses. And it's admittedly a, a really difficult part in the game. <laughs> but... What's I don't know if it's the part that everyone, well, not everyone, but like, yeah, that's that the part they had where you to go online. lessen the difficulty. Yeah, you go online and you'll, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about if you <laughs> find it. Um, there's somebody, somebody complained about it and then they got a response from um, Todd Pappy, who was the director of God of War, saying, don't worry, there's going to be some serious uh, uh, updates to that and you'll see a, a patch for it. And I, I think that's, that's not the best idea. I mean, if 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 you're playing it in hard or tight in difficulty and you're complaining about not being able to beat a part, that's <laughs> that's like depending on if you think you're losing because it's challenging or if you, that's you think like you're saying, losing because the game is like going out of its way to be as cheap as possible. That's like saying though if you're gonna go to a hooker and then wanna have sex and then you complain about getting STDs. Like that's you're getting yourself into that situation by <laughs> By going to the whorehouse in general. <laughs> she made your bed when you chose Titan mode. Right. So I mean, you're not. You can't really complain about it. This game is uh, kind of bitchy in some points, and sometimes it takes more luck than skill to get past a certain spot in a fight. But um, there's really no need. There's no PS2 games, PS1 games never had patches to make it a little bit easier on you. Exactly. Those games are <laughs> always that way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm um, sorry, guys, but that that's just unnecessary. So yeah, just deal with that, because it's God of War. It's God of War. <laughs> so if you don't like it, then you can screw. Overall, though, I, I'd give this game a solid 4 out of 5. Beautiful game, great gameplay. Um, I mean, all of our uh, thoughts about it have been... Well, actually, what would you say took it away from a 5 for you? Um, I gotta think about this one. I think, I mean, yeah, you gotta keep it in the same vein as the other games, so you can't change it too much, but the, the, the fighting style could have been 
if you really wanted to bring bring it home, you could have done something different with it. Make it either more real, since Kratos is really still a man in this one, or make it, you know, because that would make it harder too. You're, you're you're just a man. Yeah, so you'd have less to do. It it was well, it would it was complicated because they have to make it more epic in scale than it's ever been. Yet have Kratos not be as powerful as he was. Yeah, and yeah, just uh, going in two different directions. The story itself was good, but it could have been. It, it seems like I mean, obviously, with Greek mythology, it's always <laughs> kill a god or kill somebody that you give a shit about or just kill in general. So I mean, but in this one, the story just seemed like the same as the other one. It's just different people you had to kill to get where you needed to go. So in that sense, it's also a little worse. But really what took it home for me, what, what knocked it down that level, besides the story, is uh, the puzzles. God of War is notorious for some crazy puzzles that you you have to like think backwards to actually <laughs> figure it out. And it didn't, it didn't give me any real challenges. They were fun to look at. Yeah. But you, you know... But it wasn't really... Yeah, but I understand. It wasn't You know my God of War mentality when we played Portal 2... And I didn't even have to use that that much <laughs> in this game. To me, that would have been an actual advantage, or that would have been like, <laughs> that's why this game is good. <laughs> but yeah, I like I like the challenge. Um, so yeah, four out of five, great game. Get it. <laughs> yeah, get it. Get it's, it. It's, it's fun. It's, it's pretty. Just watching it, I'm like, I'm gonna play it. So. <laughs> All right. So um, that's it for this one. And as always. Uh, well, wait, not not as always yet, because I forgot to tell them to like, comment, and subscribe. Right. And let Make us know sure. if you agree with us or if you if have you any, of, any objections. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be people talking about that via, via update, people talking about the multiplayer, like, man, fuck you, it's great multiplayer, but to each his own. <laughs> and what, what it possibly means that if you can just put a patch in and change the whole essence of a part in a game, yeah. if that affects the game or affects what what it means to play it or whatever, but but that could be for a different video entirely. <laughs> I'm sure this is past 20 minutes already. Probably. <laughs> Alright guys. Just make podcasts from now on. <laughs> right. Alright guys. Um, Stay fancy.